last two games. Uh, is it, you guys just feel that much better shooting in your own gym, or uh, did, did you get some stuff done in practices in between? We got some stuff done in practice. Uh, playing hard, you know, just playing defense, and the main focus is just playing defense. We ain't worried about offense right now. You know, we're giving up a lot of points, so our main focus is playing defense, we're trying to start the other team. I guess uh, just for you personally, I mean, I should, you know, your, your trip to Knoxville last year wasn't one yeah. of your better performances. I mean, how intent were you to, I mean, strike a measure of, of revenge? Do you remember as a player things like that against certain teams or moments like that? Definitely. Uh, last year, that was my, that my, worst, my worst loss ever in my life. So, you know, I just, you know, want to get it a win. No matter what, I just want to get it a win. So, the main focus was playing hard defense, you know, scoring if I can, get my teammates involved, and that was the main focus. You got in a little bit of foul trouble early, right at the beginning. How did you manage to stay out of that and control that for the rest of the game? Uh, just stay cool, stay to myself, stay focused, uh, let the game come to me. You know, don't go out there and get another crazy foul, and just play my game. The last two games, y'all were out scored by, by double digits in the second half. How much did y'all talk about that at halftime and sort of keep your foot on the gas and not let Tennessee cut into that lead? Uh, we just stayed in the locker room, stayed, you know, put our foot on their neck and just play our game. You know, uh, man, focus was defense, you know, because, you know, they get they hit a couple shots, they get hot, they make them run. So our main focus was, you know, not letting them get on the run, anything like that. And if they did get on the run, try to stop it. How big was it for you guys to get your first conference win at home now that you got two more ahead now? Uh, it was big, you know, giving us confidence going into the next game, uh, going into Mississippi State, and just being ready for it. Uh, it's one of a big boost for us, you know, we now we're ready for the next game, you know, you got to take it day by day. How much you did, uh, I know you guys are on a one-man team, in fact, uh, you, you and Anthony got most of the work done today. How, how important is it just when he gets, how much does it help when he gets it going? Uh, it's big, but it's not a one-man show. You know, it's a it's a it's a fifteen fifteen man roster. You know, the main focus was the uh, main focus is getting everybody into it and uh, not worrying about what one person doing. You know, uh, just standing together and just playing with each other. Reflecting back on that loss, I mean, I just say you know just the swing to go from losing from forty six yeah. to beating a team by seventeen. Yeah, I mean, is Georgia basketball sixty three points better now? Or is that is it does it feel? I mean, can you describe just how much better it feels when I mean, you beat Memphis, you beat Tennessee, and now people are talking about you guys as a tournament team? Yeah, uh, you know, we're not worrying about the outside noise right now. Uh, we really weren't worrying about last year. You know, they, we got nine freshmen, so we really weren't worrying about last year, you know, because they went on the team, and they, you know, they didn't uh, get experience with that. The main focus was, you know, coming out and trying to beat this team we play tonight. But, but, I mean, for you personally. Oh, for me personally, it was big, you know, get this win. And uh, it's just big for me, really. Ray, you talked about uh, foul trouble a little bit earlier. You know, from the bench, how nice was it to see? You know, I guess Don Hale had six points. Vera had lived. How cool was that to see your teammates want to pick up the slack early while when you were sideline foul trouble? Man, I love it every time. But, you know, uh, that's just showing that our team versatile. You know, it ain't always about one man doing, you know, doing all the scoring. We got multiple players that can score and get hot. You never know at any given night. You know, it could be anybody that get hot. And that's just the main focus. You know, they come in and contribute. We love it every time. Even the coaches do. They love it. So that's the main focus. Anthony, you were 4-11 Saturday um, against Auburn tonight. You were, you were perfect. How much time you spend in the gym uh, uh, shooting free throws? Uh, as soon as I got back, I got to the gym and just shot free throws. Uh, and every workout that I did, I made sure I made uh, 22 for 22 and then made 10 in a row. And then I did 10 like rapid fire free throws. So I was just dialed in when I went to the free throw line. I was like, I can't do the same thing I did last game. Any more questions for Rayshon? Yes, yeah, sir. Hey, y'all have a beautiful night. I'm gone. <laughs> um, you came out obviously with 20 points in the first half, and then fell a little bit quieter in the second half. What's kind of the shift there in your mentality? Um, I, I didn't feel like I failed. I just felt like um. I did what I had to do in the first half. We got a lead, so now I'm just going to try to create for my teammates and do what I can with the ball and dishing the ball to them. So I wasn't really trying to do too much. I was just trying to get a win and get get a win as a team. So then how does your role shift in the second half when you're trying to do that? Um, just passing the ball, trying to find my teammates, trying to get people like Ray going because he was in foul trouble early, so I know what he want to do. So I'm trying to get Ray going, uh, Tyree Crump, um, people like Christian Brown, Jordan Harris, just getting them the ball and letting them do what they do.
Anthony, Tennessee I, I looked like the longest team you, you guys had seen. They had some really athletic guys. I mean, how much did you relish that challenge? I saw you matched up with uh, Ponds when we guys, I think you touched the top of the backboard. When you play against guys like that, does that raise your adrenaline and your competitive fire, knowing what you're going up against there size-wise and athletic-wise? I mean, I didn't know anything about those guys, so no, not really. I just knew we was playing Tennessee, and they had a pretty good, they had a really good team, really tough team, so we just came out there and played tough. Well, it seemed like at times against Auburn, maybe settled for some, for some jump shots <coughs> at times. How much did you and Coach Green maybe talk about maybe maybe driving to the rim more and, and getting better shots, catching shoot shots, stuff like that leading up to this game? And how did it affect kind of what shots you look for tonight? I mean, we always take it. Uh, I don't feel like I set them. I just feel like sometimes they pack the paint, so I got to take the jump shot to make them come out. But uh, yeah, we talk about it all the time, so I try to do it more today, and I'm going to try to keep doing it every game. Yeah, I think before the half, you had a dunk and then you hit the long three. Uh, you wanted to celebrate with the fans all this. You know, like, do, do you enjoy that interaction, trying to kind of uh, get it with them? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I love the, uh, the crowd. I love the fans. I appreciate them every time they come out and support. Uh, they're always great. Great energy, always loud, and the best fans ever. So every time I get a chance, I try to uh, celebrate with them. What does uh, what does Xavier mean to this team? And did it feel like something was almost missing when he went down with that injury? Uh, Xavier is probably the heart and soul of the team. I mean, he always bring energy, uh, everything we need on the court. And when he went down, everybody was just like sad because I mean, we can't really do anything without Xavier, but. I told him when he went down, when we got in the huddle, I said, I'm going to pick you up. Don't worry about it. You're done for the day. I got, I'm going to make sure we get the win. So just being able to depend on your other, your brothers is, is great. How did it feel to be a part of your first conference win? How can that help the momentum going forward in the next conference game? Uh, we, we was just like, uh, to get on a winning streak, we got to win one game at a time. So we won this game, and we got to get another one game winning streak. So we're going to try to go on the road and win another game. So it just felt great. And, Tyree Crump uh, had a big uh, speech during halftime. It was like, they beat us real bad last year, so we can't let them come here and beat us. So we just took that and, and ran with it. Anthony, obviously your your name's getting out there bigger than ever. Is it is it still fun? Are you still, is it still the same attitude or is it a little bit more business like now that we're getting into the middle of the season and, and you guys are, are aiming for an NCAA tournament spot? I mean, basketball is always business for me. I mean, because I'm trying to make a lot of money playing this game, but you never, let the fun get taken away from you. I mean, that's why you play it, because it's fun. Like like someone asked me earlier about the crowd. I mean, that's fun to me to get the crowd involved and get them real hype. So I never let the fun get taken from me. You said before the season you wanted to pack it out and hear like football games. Did you hear the, the just like football cheer from the fans? And did you? Yeah, I was I was on the sideline dancing when they were saying that. I, I, was, I was pretty happy. How do you stay level-headed, though, that tonight's six NBA scouts, the couple Wednesdays ago, it was like 31. How do you stay level and not let that get to you, knowing that there are eyes on you and everyone is expecting you to perform in that bubble? Um, I didn't even know there were NBA scouts here. Um, I don't really care about stuff like that. I just, I just try to go out and play for my brothers and get a win. I mean, whatever I do don't really matter to, to me. I mean, to other people it may, but I just try to win and get my teammates involved all the time. When you came out for the final time, you and Coach Green kind of shared a moment. Uh, what did he say to you? What was his message to you right there? Uh, I really don't know. I really don't remember. Uh, okay. I don't. I don't remember. Two more questions. Did you have a late night uh, shooting session this week? Um, yeah. And uh, how often did you do that? Uh, I had. I was in here at one o'clock. Um, what was yesterday? Monday. I was in here at 1 o'clock on Monday, and yesterday I was in here about like 10, 30, 11. So, I mean, most of the time I'm always in here late night because that's when I like to shoot. That's when I got my most energy because I have nothing to do other than play the game so, or play with my dog. Uh, in those sessions, did you like call a GA out to, to come rebound for you and pass it back? And uh, what type of dog do you uh, I got the best GA in the country. His name uh, Reed. I mean, he's the best dude in the country. The best dude I ever been around. I mean, he's always willing to work with me. Like I called him Monday and was like, uh, uh, "Let's shoot." But he called me like previously at like nine o'clock and was like, "I know you're gonna want to shoot, so come now." I was like, "Nah, bro, I'm good. I'm too tired." And I got bored. I got tired of playing my dog, so I told my dog I was gonna go and call Reed. It was like twelve o'clock maybe, and he was like, "All right, let's do it." And I got one of my friends to come rebound for me, and I I got an American bully. She's the prettiest thing ever. How old is the dog? How old? Uh, she's about eight months now. Yeah. Hey, hey. London. Her name is London.
Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Y'all have a good one.